Okay, let's have a class. Uh, the material cover from today to the end of semester will be in the final exam. Okay, final exam is not accumulated. So, and I will gradually add the midterm exam uh, score into the e campus. So you can see it sometime this week. Okay, so this is the fact sheet is right here. You will come to uh, collect one uh, after this because I'm doing the uh, recording. You can get it. Uh, maybe, uh, Ryan, just maybe give them some right now. Is, is, is that okay? Yeah. So just give them some if, you, if they didn't have it. So, uh, what we got to do today is uh, file. Okay, you don't have it? Chemical. Whoever needs just okay. yeah. test. Yes, you will do that. Biochemical test of bacteria. Okay, so we all have a, a three labs to do it. The overall concept is. There is a substrate, and the sometimes ba bacteria has an enzyme, and will generate the products. And you know that, and the products could be acid, could be a gas, and lots of the time will cause is a color change. So then, in the median, it will show in the color change that we know, know basically what type of the bacteria it is. But we also want to mention, we do in the lab, there's a lot of the tests we are going through. But keep in mind, the biochemistry test is about 70 to 80% accuracy. And uh, we cannot only to determine a bacteria culture only based on biochemistry test. That's why we had a molecular message to follow up to do it. Okay, that's what we usually do. Okay, what are the biochemistry tests we will do today? We will do two tests. Number one is called a urea test. So urea test, very simple. We had a urea tube right here. It's so simple, it's a urea tube. You just add a bacteria there. After growing, we're gonna see the color change. Then we know it's positive or negative. But the key thing is that you need to know the story behind it. Okay, this is a urea. This is the structure of urea. Urea most of the time is widely existent in liver. And if bacteria has an enzyme called ureas, and start from today, you should know, whenever you see ASE, it means an enzyme. We will go through a little bit of detail in the lecture section after next week. Okay, if bacteria has ureas, it will break down urea, become ammonia and carbon dioxide. Then the story is in this tube, how do we know it is a bacteria that has ureas, will generate ammonia? This is a weak alkaline. In this urea test tube, there is a pH indicator which is called a phenol red. And when this alkaline generates, this phenol red, most of the time, will turn a little bit brownish color. So therefore, we know it is positive. So, we do the inoculation today, and on Thursday, if you see your tube turn as light brownish, and a little bit of red, light brownish to red, sometimes it also could become like a cherry <coughs> red, sometimes, that means 
it is urea test positive. Somewhere between brown to red, it is urea test positive. Now, we also want to mention this enzyme is very important for some of the bacteria, especially a very pathogenic bacteria called HP. Helicobacter, back, back, Helicobacteria polyrin, we just acronym called HP. So the story is that our stomach environment is very acid. You know that the pH is around 1 to 2. Most of the bacteria cannot survive. However, the pathogenic bacteria like HP, they have urea, so they will break down urea, become ammonia. This is a weak alkaline. They could buffer the low pH back to around 4 to 5. And this is for most of the pathogenic bacteria can survive, and this pathogen also can survive. Now, what are going to be the toxication, the results for the bad results for this pathogen? Because it end up with stomach cancer. Okay, so lots of the people in some countries they require people after like 45, 50 years old have to do a routine screening test for the HP to see whether it's existing in your body. Otherwise, you have to use antibiotics because it's going to end up with stomach cancer. Okay, so that's a story. Today's test is very simple. You have a urea tube. This is the urea test tube. You need to label at the top. Don't forget the label at the top, okay? Your initial batch number and the assigned bacteria there. And use loop, pick from slants, then go inside. Okay, it will become from the slants. And then we will do the incubation at 35 degrees Celsius, 48 hour we'll look for whether there is a color change. So that's what we're going to do. So we do it very simple. Label around on the top. You name, bench number, and assign the bacteria using loop. It's coming from these slots. Okay, the bacteria we're going to test today is Staphylococcus aureus SA. Bacillus subtilis. B.S. Citrobacter, C.F. It is a surrogate for Proteus vulgarius. Uh, we cannot use a B.S.L. two passages, so we use this B.S.L. one passage. Another one is e and another one is E. coli. Obviously, some of them are not E. coli. Some of them very similar. Looks a pink colony. It looks like Serotia. So we'll see. Okay. So this is the first one. Well, I will assign the culture later on. The second test is we call it a three tube fermentation test. Okay, fermentation, you know that. In the anaerobic environment, And the bacteria could break down the carbon hydrate to generate gas or acid. Now, of course, the fermentation could go through secondary fermentation, will generate alcohol, and the further could become a vinegar. That's something we will mention in the lecture. But here we don't go that far away. It will generate gas and acid. So what are we going to do today is, so this is lactose and uh, uh, fructose. Okay. okay, now, here is something you need to know. This is kind of like a confusing people. Fructose is a huge volume. 
Lactose is red, is yellow cap, and the glucose is like this. And another one is sucrose, I think. So. What we have, what, what, what we have here? Dextrose, lactose, 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 and the sucrose, and, and, and the fructose. Is that right? Okay. So we have a sweet tube. These three tubes will have the first one dextrose. Dextrose is glucose. Second one will be lactose. And the last one will be fructose. Okay, so the bacteria, once they grow there, what is going to happen? They could generate acid. Now, how we got to generate, we know it's generated acid. The same thing as here, we had a pH indicator phenol red. <coughs> and this is what going to be the range of the phenol red. Phenol red as a pH indicator at the pH 7, pH uh, 2, this is, will be pH 13. At a very alkaline pH, pH 13, this is maybe cherry red. Some kind of like a purple. At very acid environment, pH 2, this will be yellow. Well, right on the top too. How about the pH seven in the new neutral in the neutral status? This will be just original color. So, based on the color change of the tube, we will know whether there is acid. If you see a yellow color, which means it's acid. If you see cherry red, which means they generate alkaline. <coughs> okay? If you didn't see the color change, there's nothing happened for the fermentation. Now the question is, how do we know there is a gas generated? If you look very carefully, inside there is another tube, is it? So I'm going to draw it. Inside, there's another small tube. This small tube, we call it a Duran tube. If the bacteria generate a gas, what you're going to see is after incubation, you will see a bubble generated. We can say bubble. On the top, you will see a bubble, which indicates a gas generator. So we're going to look for whether there is a gas on Thursday. If there is a gas generator, what's going to happen? Which means it's gas generation positive. Some bacteria will generate the gas, some bacteria is not. Okay. This will be also, don't forget the label. Label on the top. Rebention number, initial name, assigned the bacteria culture. That's very important for every three tube. And I also want to mention, this is called a king cap tube. This king cap tube is number one accident in the lab. So make sure you have a rack ready, go there. Have two hands, hold on. Don't hold on like this. Very easy to fall off. It's a number one accident in the lab. Then we have to process it. So have a rack, have two hands to have these. Then go to do it, okay? There will be assigned the culture. Okay, last thing, what we're going to do. Uh, we will test today is the impact of temperature for bacterial growth. 
And this is very simple. Four of you work as a group. You will get a neutron slots. Okay, four of you, this will be four as a group. Uh, for one assigned culture. And every culture, we will be doing very simple streak onto four slums. So every student responsible for one. Just a very simple zigzag streak. And after that, we will incubate at a different temperature. The first one will go 4 degrees Celsius refrigerator. Second one will put at room temperature, represent 25 degrees Celsius. The third one will at 35 degrees Celsius. And the last one will have 55 degrees Celsius. Because we want to see whether the bacteria is mesophile, is that right? whether the bacteria is thermophile, and whether the bacteria is psychotrophs. So that's we will do the test. Okay, it's a very simple test. So let's assign the culture and tell you how to do Every student, every individual, you will get is these four items today. Is these five items, okay? Three tube fermentation test and a urea test. You get an additional slant, which is for temperature test. Let's talk about this temperature test first. Temperature will be four of you as a group. Uh, here I will say we can do, you guys could be a group. And here you three of you will be a group, three of you a group. Here, four, 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 four of you as a group. You will do a one bacteria culture at a one temperature. So let's do that. You guys do E. coli. This group will do staphylococcus, uh, do staphylococcus aureus. You do EC, you guys will be SA, and you will be a sexual bacteria. You guys do bacillus. Then back, we'll do E. coli. And then goes here, we'll have a uh, uh, Citric bacter and Staphylococcus aureus. Then we will do bacillus, and the last group will do E. coli. <coughs> this will be assigned a culture for temperature. Okay? Now, for three tube fermentation test, every individual student will have assigned a culture. So let's assign that. You will do E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus. Citrobacter, Bacillus, E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Citrobacter, Bacillus, E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Citrobacter, Bacillus, E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Citrobacter, Bacillus. Then go here, we do E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Citrobacter, Bacillus. So E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Citrobacter, Bacillus. E. coli, staphylococcus, citrobacter, bacillus. E. coli, staphylococcus, citrobacter, bacillus. That will you assign the culture for these fermentation test tube. But keep in mind, your results will be shared with the other students in the bench. So the whole bench here will look at the results in the recording on Thursday because you're only responsible for one culture. The results could be different, and we will talk about that. Um, sometimes uh, um, on Thursday. Okay, so that will be the plan. It's pretty simple.